Hey guys, this video is being recorded on November 23rd, 2020. Just a few days ago, Pfizer submitted their vaccine to the FDA for approval for emergency use. Now, let's take a bit of time and talk about that for a bit. What is this vaccine? How does it work? And when can you get vaccinated? I hope this video ages well. Let's start with what is this vaccine? For those of you who have been living under a rock, there are two promising vaccines on the horizon and ready to be distributed. Of course, they can't ship them yet because the FDA is still checking over their work, but the news is that their vaccine will begin to ship within 24 hours of approval, which is pretty insane. While they're conducting their phase-through trial, the scientists and distributors are wasting no time producing tens of millions of doses ready to go, which is fantastic. The sooner we can get this to the people who need it, the better. Okay, so the first one that has been submitted is the Pfizer vaccine, called BNT162B2. <laughs> no wonder people don't use this actual name. What is this? The other funny thing is that they're not actually the creators of this vaccine, but rather they're the ones overseeing the clinical trials. The developers are BioNTech, which is a German biotech company. Anyway, the vaccine has been shown to be around 95% efficacy, which, which is pretty good. What does this 95% mean, and how do they get this number? Excellent question. It's something you just kind of accept for, sci uh, for what scientists give you, but you never really question it. Basically, the way they did this is that they vaccinated tens of thousands of people. As of recording this now, I think they have, uh, there have been over 40,000 subjects, which is an, an absolutely insane amount. I can't even imagine a thousand patients for our trial, much less 40,000. Anyway, out of these people, if they then test positive for COVID later, they report that and the coordinators then determine if they were in the control group or the experimental group. It seems that out of these people, 170 people tested positive, and out of these 170 people, 162 were in the control group and 8 were in the experimental. Divide that um, a bit and you see that the vaccine is 95% effective. It's that simple. Yes, it seems that this system has issues. Obviously, it would be a lot better if you could then purposely expose them to, uh, to COVID, but that would kind of be unethical. So for now, this is really the best method. Okay, we're a little sidetracked, so let's get back to topic. Uh, the main thing I think you will all be interested in is how this vaccine works. It works differently than what you may think. The most common old-school method is to inject antigens or a weakened version of the virus, usually grow, uh, growing the virus in a different temperature, blah blah blah, you already know all of this, but the Pfizer vaccine mechanisms may be a bit unfamiliar to many of you. It is an RNA-based uh, uh, vaccine. A uh, vaccine does not only mean something that develops your adaptive immune system. Any sort of immune system modification is technically a vaccine. mRNA vaccines work by injecting an mRNA into your bloodstream, which then goes into your cells and it gets translated into viral protein. Now, you may be thinking, what in the world? That's basically just the virus itself. And you're not technically wrong. However, the difference is we only inject RNA for one protein we want to recognize, and it by itself is not harmful without other viral components. Now, if you think about it, what's the protein we want to recognize? You guessed it, it's the spike protein, the one that recognizes the ACE2 receptors of human cells. If we just have that protein floating around in your blood without anything else, it's harmless, and the immune system will recognize it and produce the necessary B cells and antibodies. It's pretty simple, yet you never really would have thought of it. Uh, so in order, you inject the RNA, your own cells will translate it into proteins which gets released, then your immune system recognizes it and produces an adaptive immune response. The vaccine requires two doses, four weeks apart. It's not a huge commitment, but we are still trying to find out exactly how long the vaccine lasts for. Many scientists are saying it could be a significant amount of time, at least a couple of months, but you know, we can't really say for certainty right now. The other vaccine that is of interest is the Moderna vaccine. This one is also about 95% efficacy, and yes, it is also an mRNA vaccine. The advantage of this one over Pfizer is its easy storage conditions. One of the things that made me a little nervous is how these vaccines would need to be stored in order to preserve them. In the worst case scenario, you would need a negative 70 degree freezer. I used to work in a lab that had these giant negative 80 degree freezers and they were like these massive structures that once you open will have a ton of ice built up. You then need this tiny shovel or something that you use to break off all the ice chunks as a way of cleaning. Otherwise, the shelves just get overwhelmed with ice and you won't have much storage space for anything. And I remember at the lab, everyone was too lazy to do it, including me, because who wants to spend their break time shoveling ice? 
Anyway, the point is these freezers are more difficult to manage and they are much harder to set up and purchase. As a result, not every clinic, hospital, or pharmacy will have them. So those sites would not be able to store the vaccine、um, to inject into patients. This is actually the biggest disadvantage of the Pfizer vaccine because it requires a storage of negative 70 degrees Celsius. Don't even get me started on how to manage transportation. And then we have the Moderna vaccine, who have announced that their vaccine does not require that low of a temperature, but instead only needs to be stored at refrigerator temperature, which is about 4 degrees. And if you store it for long term, then, keep,、uh, then keep it, keeping it at freezing temperatures just below zero is the most optimal. That's a massive improvement because most places holding drugs or vaccines will at the very least have a refrigerator, and a regular freezer is also easy to come by. That makes the Moderna vaccine a lot more attractive as an option compared to Pfizer. But of course, that does not mean we will only use one or the other. Realistically, both will be distributed around. Moderna, as of this recording, has not yet submitted their clinical trial data for FDA review, so it's probably going to lag behind Pfizer a bit in terms of distribution. So, now that we know this information, what can we expect in terms of being able to actually get this vaccine? First of all, I originally predicted that a vaccine would be made available by early 2021. And then, after hearing all the news in the media, I then thought it would be end of 2020. And that's exactly when we will see FDA approval. Well, assuming they do get approved, which most likely they will, FDA approval generally takes about three weeks, give or take. So, we're looking at an approval of maybe December 10th or so. And once this goes through, we would have word that distribution will commence, commence within 24 hours. When I looked up how many doses there are, I saw somewhere around 30 or 50 million doses. But then I was watching one of those press conferences from the White House, and the guy in charge of distribution said 100 million doses. But then is that Pfizer and Moderna combined? I don't know at this point. But at least we know there will be a very significant amount going out. If you're trying to vaccinate every American, which is 320 million, by the way,、uh, then we would have to produce a lot more. But realistically, that's not going to happen. And let's be honest, a lot of people are not going to have access to it either. And don't forget those people who will straight up refuse to vaccinate. <laughs> more for the rest of us, I suppose. So now comes the $1 million question When will you and I get it? Well, that depends on a lot of factors, such as where you live, your social status, and your vulnerability. The CDC is creating a vaccination recommendation in collaboration with the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. Basically, the experts are getting together and looking at data regarding、um, many factors such as age, pre existing conditions, vulnerability, gender, race, things like that, and determining the best order in which the vaccine should be given. The goals are to decrease as many deaths as possible using this plan and to preserve the functioning of society. Now, as of the, this recording, they haven't released this recommendation list yet, but we can already guess who will get the vaccine first. Healthcare workers, especially, especially. Please vaccinate our doctors, nurses, PAs, anyone's, anyone who works to treat COVID patients. People at high risk. Christmas and New Year's gatherings would be much less dangerous if the people at risk did not have to worry about potentially dying from seeing their family members. Vulnerable people、um, also include people over the age of 65, which, by the way, the, fa- the Pfizer vaccine is 90% effective for. Then we'll go down to people like those who work in essential industries, those who work in large groups, until we finally get to the healthy individuals who can afford to work from home, like me. I'm probably going to be one of the last to receive the vaccine, and I'm perfectly okay with that. If you're around my age, say 20 some years old, you're old, you'll likely be on the same boat as me. And of course, children. Are also low risk, so they will be one of the last as well. And then, all the way at the very, very bottom, we have flat earthers. Now, who knows if we will even follow these CDC guidelines? It's hard to say. I personally think we should. Now, finally, the last thing on everyone's minds how much will this vaccine cost? The short answer is if you're in the United States, you will pay almost nothing, if anything at all. There is massive government funding for this, so I wouldn't expect anyone to pay more than a couple of dollars. And even if you have to pay the full price for whatever reason, each vaccine from Pfizer is around $35 to $40, which honestly is incredibly cheap. Moderna may be a little bit pricier at $50. But again, I don't think the American people will be paying that full price, and it will come as free for many. Good news is on the horizon, I suppose. Now, the thing I've thought about a lot is if this vaccine will be cheap and available enough for other countries too. Because, in case you forgot, the United States is not the only country in the world. We need to also put an effort in getting these vaccines to other countries, especially those who are more susceptible. 
All right, those are my final thoughts. Thanks everyone for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this vaccination information session. <laughs> Next week, we'll be talking about Flat Earth again, which honestly is just a massive downgrade. Special thanks to Fireshard, Alan Morton, and JN for their loyal support over at Patreon. See ya!